So you just got your ham radio license. Congratulations. Now what? Hey everyone, welcome back to the DX Engineering channel. I'm Michael, KI8R. So, you finally got your ham radio license. You bought a book, you took a class, or maybe you had an app on your phone to study. Okay, so now what? Well, the answer really depends on your interest. Ask yourself, what got you interested in the hobby in the first place? Well, for some people, that answer is easy. While for others, they may only have a basic idea of what ham radio is all about. Still, others may feel lost and really don't know what to do from here. I talk to people every week who are either interested in ham radio or just got licensed. One of the first questions I ask is, who do you want to talk to? Some people will say they want to stay in touch with a friend or a relative, while others are interested in talking to people around the globe. Still, others are interested in having it for emergency communications. So whether you just got your technician, your general, or you went all the way to extra, you probably have questions about what is next. One of the biggest problems with ham radio tests today is that they do little to help you get started on the air. So let's take a look at some practical ideas to help you get started. Connect with a local ham radio club. You can find a local ham radio club by going to the ARRL website and clicking on find a club or just by Googling ham radio club near me. Many clubs are more than just social groups. They can be a great resource for learning more about the hobby. Some clubs have activities such as field day, teach license classes, or offer classes to learn CW. They may even offer sessions on topics such as building antennas, operating satellites, or any number of topics related to the hobby. Check out your local club and get involved. Find an Elmer. An Elmer is someone who is experienced in the hobby and can mentor you in your ham radio journey. Find someone who will take you by the hand and help you get moving in the right direction. An Elmer will take you under their wing and provide you personal guidance. They will answer the thousands of questions you have and will help you get on the right path. YouTube. A great way to learn more about the ham radio hobby quickly is YouTube. There are plenty of good ham radio channels on YouTube these days, such as Ham Radio 2.0, Ham Radio Crash Course, and of course, the DX Engineering Channel, along with a host of others. This is a great way to start learning more about our hobby. Public service. If public service is something you're interested in, get involved with groups like ARES, which is the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, RACES, which is Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service, or a local ham radio club. Many of these organizations offer support for walkathons, bike races, or many other events, as well as being involved in emergency situations such as coordinating with local law enforcement during or after a hurricane or other severe weather event. MCOM. MCOM is primarily centered around emergency communications and is sometimes associated with the prepper community. What kind of emergency are you preparing for? And who do you want to be able to talk to? Don't be someone who buys a radio and sticks it in a closet for what may happen someday. Doing so will leave you not knowing how to use the radio should there be ever be an emergency. Spend time with your radio and learn how to use it. Get an understanding for how propagation works on the different HF bands and practice these skills constantly. This will be invaluable should that day ever come. Find a local repeater. The ARRL publishes their repeater directory annually. There is also repeaterbook.com, which is an invaluable resource for not only finding local repeaters, but also repeaters all over the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. You can also find a number of repeaters worldwide as well. There's also RFinder, which has a subscription service and apps for iOS and Android. Poda and Soda. Parks on the Air has taken on a life of its own, and if you like ham radio with a view, there's also Summits on the Air. Both offer the opportunity to take your radio out into the field to make contacts around the country and around the world. 
You can be the activator, the person in the park or on the summit, or you can be the hunter, searching for parks or summits from the comfort of your own shack. Digital voice modes. Digital voice modes include DMR, D-Star, Fusion, P25, and XDN, and now M17. These modes are very popular and a great way to connect with people all over the world using a local repeater or a hotspot. Both connect via the internet to allow you to link with digital voice systems around the world. Contesting. Ham radio has a competitive element to it, which is often referred to as contesting or radio sport. There are a number of contests throughout the year, with the goal usually being to make as many contacts as possible during the contest period. The rules for a given contest will define the mode used, the time period, and the kind of information to be exchanged. This can be a great way to find new countries that you haven't worked before. Weak signal VHF and UHF. This has been described as the most addictive, the most rewarding, and sometimes the most frustrating thing you can do in ham radio. You're often working a signal that is right at the noise level. These frequencies can be enhanced by a meteor trail or a sporadic E opening. Most people operate single sideband or CW. However, there is a growing trend among hams to include the digital modes such as FT8 and JT65. Satellites in the ISS. Hams have a number of satellites orbiting the Earth. Think of them as repeaters in the sky. One of the neat things with some of these birds, as they're called, is that you can talk with other hams using a dual band handheld and a small directional antenna. There are also satellites in higher orbits that require larger antennas, more equipment, and higher power. And there's also an active ham radio station on the ISS as well. APRS. APRS is short for Automatic Packet Reporting System. While this mode is often associated with vehicle tracking, it can be used for several other things, including messaging, email, group bulletin, current weather, soda and poda spotting, and much more. There's also APRS digipeters on the International Space Station and other satellites, along with ground-based digipeters all over the world. APRS is also gated to the internet. Digital modes. FT4, FT8, JT65, and others have become very popular and make it easy for stations to have reliable communications with low power. These modes are considered weak signal modes. Digital modes are designed for, to maximize communication even when signals are very weak, down to as low as negative 24 dB. This means that stations with low power and less than optimal antennas can make contacts around the world. HF bands. There is a whole world out there that is well beyond what you can do on VHF and UHF. Technician licenses can operate sideband on part of the 10 meter band from 28.3 to 28.5 megahertz, along with CW, RIDI, and digital modes from 28.0 to 28.3 megahertz. When band conditions are good, 10 meters can offer worldwide communications during the day. An antenna like a simple dipole or a converted CB antenna will work well. And don't forget, technicians can operate CW on 80, 40, and 15 meters. For general and extra class licensees, there are even more privileges on the HF bands. And since we're talking about CW, the CW requirement for getting your ham radio license was dropped back in 2007. Since that time, there's been a CW renaissance. There are plenty of ways to learn CW today. Long Island CW Club and CW Ops are two great ways to learn. Both offer structured courses for learning CW and helping you increase your speed. There are also apps available for your cell phone for learning and practicing CW. Buy a radio and build your home station. There are plenty of choices whether you choose to buy something new or used. Keep in mind, that a new radio comes with a warranty, so if there is a problem with the rig, you can get it repaired at no cost to you. If you purchase a used radio, particularly an older model, and it fails, you may or may not be able to get it repaired. Often manufacturers won't service older models because there are no longer parts available. Still, a used rig can be a good way to save money, and many older radios still have plenty of life left in them. 
Don't ever feel like you need to have a large antenna and a table full of equipment to enjoy this hobby. Many hams have shacks that are just a 100 watt radio and a wire antenna, and they are very successful. While many others enjoy the challenge of operating low power or QRP radios and simple antennas. Now, go out and make that first contact. Don't be afraid to pick up the mic and announce your presence on the local repeater or call CQ on the HF bands. We've all been where you are today. Don't be afraid to make a mistake. We all have. You will get the hang of it quickly. Don't let the fact that you're a newbie keep you from asking questions. Get involved in your local club. Don't be afraid to try new things. Remember, ham radio is a hobby of a hundred different hobbies. And if you just got your tech license, keep going. Use the momentum to get your general and extra. You'll be glad that you did. Now I'll put links in the description below for all the things that I mentioned in the video today. Thanks for watching. I'm Michael, K-I-8-R, and we'll catch you on the next one.